Hey, what's up, my friends? Great to see you today and welcome to this moment of grace. Thoughts from his heart to impart grace for your moment. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video below, and comment down underneath the video here to let me know how this moment speaks to your heart because I want to know what God's speaking to you. I'm so excited for this moment. It is for you, and I believe it's what the Lord is saying to the churches in this hour. Like how Jesus says in the book of Revelation, he who has ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, let him listen. I want to share with you a quote from one of my favorite books, The Shack, where Holy Spirit, Tsarayu, in the movie is talking to Mac. They're working together in Mac's soul. Listen to this. This is so powerful. She said to Mac, Jesus didn't hold on to any rights. He willingly became a servant and lives out of his relationship to Papa. He gave up everything so that by his dependent life, he opened a door that would allow you to live free enough to give up your rights. Oh, let me pray for just one second because this is a heavy one today. Father, I ask that your holy, glorious love would just melt our hearts today in Jesus' name and let us have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand what you're saying to us, your glorious bride in Jesus' name. And let everybody say, amen. Laying down our rights. Do we have rights? This brought to mind... Jesus' letter to the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. And I found out that the word Laodicea means human rights or self-righteousness. Whew. I heard the Lord say to me, I have a message for the church of human rights. We are not the church of human rights. We are the church of Jesus Christ. The cross is proof that Jesus didn't hold on to any of his rights, but he surrendered fully to God, trusting him in everything. We don't want self-righteousness today. We want Christ-righteousness. Write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Laodicea, for these are the words of the Amen. That's another name for God, the Amen. God of do it again. The faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know all that you do, and I know that you are neither frozen in apathy nor fervent with passion. How I wish you were either one or the other, but because you are neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm, I am about to spit you from my mouth. For you claim I'm rich and getting richer. I don't need a thing. Yet you are clueless that you're miserable, poor, blind, barren, and naked. Hold on just a second. Is this Jesus Christ in the New Testament on the other side of the cross of grace? Saying these things to the church? Absolutely. Sometimes the grace of God sounds like Jesus telling you that you are miserable, poor, blind, barren, and naked. Hey, ask any married man the hard things that his wife has to say to him sometimes. <laughs> Whoa. But I thought grace only tells us nice things. Listen, Jesus Christ is the grace of God. And we must take his words to heart. And I believe that the Holy Spirit breathes on moments for us where he begins to speak for us and to us specifically with what's going on. And Jesus loves you personally, you individually, not just you as a, a conglomerate of the whole of humanity. He loves you specifically and he loves your heart and he loves what's going on inside of you. And he wants to speak directly to your life. So I counsel you to purchase gold perfected by fire. Are you going through fire? There is a holy fire. Let me tell you right now, my friends, the fire that you're experiencing is the refiner's fire. If you're willing to trust him in the midst of the heat, that fire is refining you and bringing you into your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. I tell you, the fire you're going through right now is not destroying you, it's perfecting you. It's bringing you out to God's expected end for you. God knew he had a plan, he envisioned a destiny of your life, and God is bringing that to pass through what's going on in your life right now. Purchase a white garment to cover and clothe your shameful Adam nakedness. Purchase eye salve to be placed over your eyes so that you can truly see. Aren't you glad that the grace of God speaks directly to what's going on in your life? He confronts us with truth, not to reject us, but to ultimately bring us into wholeness. I believe the Lord is anointing these words for you today in Jesus' mighty name. 
Revelation chapter three, verse 19. All those I dearly love, I unmask and train. Do you feel like the facade that you had worked so hard to try and wear as a mask is being torn off of you? Jesus loves you so much that he's unmasking every facade that covers up the truth about you so that he can openly reveal the real you to the cosmos. He loves you that much and you are that glorious, but he loves you too much to leave you hiding behind a mask. He says, all those I dearly love, I unmask and I train. You're being trained right now, my friend. Let's just jump real quick here to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. What's this talk about unmasking and training and discipline? Let's find out what the writer of Hebrews has to say about this process with the Lord. Verse 7, fully embrace God's correction as part of your training. There's that word training again. For he is doing what any loving father does for his children. For who has ever heard of a child who never had to be corrected? We all should welcome God's discipline as the validation of authentic sonship. Listen, the process and the pain you're going through right now is actually validation for the authenticity of your sonship, that you are a son, that you're a daughter. He loves you too much to leave you in your mask. He's unmasking you and training you so that he can reveal the truth about you to the world. For if we have never once endured his correction, it only proves we are strangers and not sons. And isn't it true that we respect our earthly fathers, even though they corrected us and disciplined us? Then we should demonstrate an even greater respect for God, our spiritual father, as we submit to his life-giving discipline. Listen, there is life in discipline. Wow. Let's keep reading. Our parents corrected us for the short time of our childhood as it seemed good to them. But God corrects us throughout our lives for our own good. You are being corrected for your own good. You are being corrected because you are loved. He corrects us throughout our lives for our own good, giving us an invitation to share his holiness. The process of being corrected by his love is a divine invitation to participate in his holiness. Oh, wow. Now, all discipline seems to be more pain than pleasure at the time, yet later it will produce a transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who yield to it. May I encourage you today to yield to the process of correction and discipline that your loving Father has initiated in your life. Woo, you're so not alone. You're not alone in the process. You're not alone in the correction. Correction from his loving hand is proof that you are indeed his beloved child. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Back to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, well, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come into you and feast with you and you will feast with me. Oh, there is so much more to enjoy to this, but you're going to have to catch it in the next moment of grace. This is going to be continued. So don't miss the next one. Now, listen, please subscribe, like the video, comment down below to let me know what you thought of this moment and get ready for the next moment. We're going to continue these thoughts. Check the description down below for great resources to help you in your journey in grace. It's been an honor to have you here. Thank you for joining me on this moment of grace. Thoughts from his heart to impart grace for your moment. Stay tuned. The next moment is coming up. You don't want to miss it. And we'll continue this glorious thought.